from our minds, um, you know, things that are coming in between um, us and you, Lord. Um, and may we be just focused on focus on you this morning. Um, and as as I was preparing, um, I was just kind of thinking about the Transform series and what we've been through the past few weeks, and. Um, just kind of reflecting on that, and I was just so overcome with, um, just with gratitude and thanksgiving. Um, and so, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of share from, from that. Um, so I've got, got a few verses uh, from First Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verse 34. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And from Psalm 95, verse 1 to 5. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. And lastly, from Psalm 118 verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for the past seven weeks uh, of the Transform series and you know, just, uh, you know, kind of like back to basics and thinking about all various aspects of our lives. Um, and uh, just, you know, the biggest takeaway for me was, um, you know, just acknowledging that everything comes from you. Um, and because of that, Lord, that our lives are truly, you know, every aspect of our lives, um, you know, just, just is, is from your grace, is from your mercy, Lord. Um, and, and, you know, there's really nothing that we can hold on to and take credit for. Um, but we just want to acknowledge um, that every good thing comes from you, Lord. Um, our physical health, um, our emotional health, um, our finances, our jobs, um, our relationships, Father, Lord. Uh, we just want to give you thanks uh, for what you are doing in our lives and we want to thank you that um, that we are not alone that you are with us father lord and you give us so much wisdom um, in how to navigate through uh, these various parts of our lives um, and you 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 have every intention lord to be to for us to just let you in um, all these different parts um, and to give, give you full control um, and only because you want us to truly live a life of freedom Lord and, and not to hold back any, anything from you um, and so Father I just pray that um, you know even though the, the Transform series is over we just thank you for you know all the foundational truths uh, that we've learned um, you know, walking with you each and every day and, and doing the daily devotionals and how, and also, you know, just, um, yeah, what a blessing it's been to be part of like, you know, accountability groups and forming deeper relationships with one another in House Church, Lord. It's just been such a big blessing. And so we want to thank you for this incredible life-changing experience, Father, Lord. Things that we can reflect on, um, uh, you know, in, in the future, in times of struggle, that will be just more cognizant and more uh, more aware, Father Lord. Um, you know that we need you. We need you so much. We need you in every aspect of our lives. We need you every day, in every moment, in every situation, Father Lord. We want to look to you first, Lord. We want to give you full control. Um, so I just pray, Father, for for all of us here, um, just for more surrender, Father Lord. Um, that the only thing we will hold on to will be you, Lord. Um, and as we continue to to read your word and, and let that part uh, be part of our kind of daily um, encounter and for you to be our daily bread, Father Lord. I just pray for more encounters, for a deeper intimacy with you, Lord, that the journey will continue um, and that the, the good habits that we've fostered during the past seven weeks will not stop, uh, but we will continue to build on them, Lord. Um, so thank you, Father Lord. Thank you for your word that you've spoken to us. Thank you for lives that have been transformed, Lord. Thank you for the praise reports and the testimonies that we will, um, you know, that we will, you know, come alongside and celebrate uh, with one another, um, you know, as we journey through life together, Lord, as a body. And we just thank you for all the brothers and sisters that, you, that you've brought into our lives, um, that we can encourage one another, that we can lift each other up, Lord, that we can carry one another's burdens, uh, just as you carry our burdens, Lord. Um, yeah, so just thank you so much uh, for this experience, Lord. 
um, yeah, and so in the in the same kind of vein, um, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I also just wanted to spend some time uh, to pray for our pastors this morning. Um, so we just want to uh, just um, yeah, we're just so thankful, so grateful, Father Lord, for the pastors that you have. Um, um, that you have given us, Father, in this in this community, Lord, for PSM Kim and PMAT um, and uh, PDJ as well, Father. Um, thank you, Lord, for their lives um, of surrender, for their lives of obedience, Father, Lord. Um, that that they, um, you know, just. Um, it's just so um, integral um, in leading us as a community, Father Lord, and how they take time to meet us in house church. Um, and so, Father, we just I just want to lift them up, Father Lord, and I, I um, yeah, just pray that you honor them, Father Lord, in every way. Um, that um, that that all that they do will be unto you, Father Lord, and and that you just protect them, Father. You protect uh, them, their spiritual walk with you, and every part of their lives, and in their marriage, and in the family. Um, and with your children, Father Lord, um, we we yeah just just so grateful um, for for the pastors that you've given us, and and also Father Lord, just for for the board and and the church office, Father Lord, and all the other leaders um, in in our community, Father. We just we just want to thank you, Father Lord, and we just pray um, yeah just for your covering, Father Lord, um, just for your anointing upon them, Lord. Um, and uh, that you continue to watch over them, that you will continue to lead them step by step, Father, um, and that your voice will be clear, um, that your presence will be close to them as they walk with you every day. Um, so um, thank you for um, the leaders in our midst, Lord. Um, and so we just want to pray uh, for service this morning. Um, we just pray, Father, uh, for everyone coming uh, to church. Uh, we just pray for hearts of expectation and anticipation uh, to meet with you this morning. Um, Father, help us to, to align ourselves and to posture our hearts this morning in a way that's pleasing to you, Lord. Um, we want to lift up your name, Lord. We want to glorify you this morning. Um, we want to acknowledge uh, who you are in our lives, Lord, um, and to, we want to surrender more to you. Um, so I just pray for every single one of uh, the congregation this morning that we will come uh, not, uh, you know, just because it's just what we do, but we just want to come with um, a heart of intention, Lord. Uh, so we just pray for clear minds, Lord, for clear hearts, um, that the message uh, will, will, will be uh, seeds that will, uh, that will take root and will bear fruit, Lord. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we want to lift up the worship team, um, Father, um, and that it will just be a, a wonderful time of just coming together and lifting up our voices and, and praising you, Father, Lord, and our worship will rise to you as a sweet uh, sweet incense rising to your throne, Lord, because you are so worthy, Lord. You are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of our lives. Um, and so, um, give us a heart of worship this morning, Lord. We just, we just want to be in your presence, Father. Um, and so, we thank you for the worship team, Lord. Um, we just pray um, that everything that goes behind worship uh, will be smooth for sound and media. Um, and all of the instruments and the speakers and, um, you know, that everything will, will be in alignment with you, Lord. Uh, we just pray that you just saturate this place uh, with your presence, Father, every corner uh, of this room and for CM and all the other rooms uh, for youth um, and for Sprouts, uh, Father, that, uh, that your presence will be here, Lord, um, that you are welcome here, that we want you here, Lord. Um, and so uh, we lift up uh, the worship to you this morning um, and we also just pray for uh, CM. Um, just, uh, yeah, just so thankful, Father Lord, for what you're doing in the lives of our children. Um, we thank you that you so, you so love um, our children and that you honour you honor their simple childlike faith, Lord, and it's something that's so pleasing to you. Um, so we just pray that you continue to speak to, to our children, Lord, that, um, that it would not just be knowledge, but it would be experience, Lord. Uh, 
that, that they will be just personal encounters with you, Lord. Um, so we just pray for PMAT and all of the Sunday school teachers this morning um, and for for Yvain and for the youth as well, Lord. Um, yeah, we just pray um, just for deeper revelation, um, Father, for your truth to to take root, um, you know, in the hearts and, and the minds of, of all the children, Lord. Uh, we pray that um, the whole CM will, will be smooth, Lord. We just pray um, that you give the CM teachers just lots of wisdom and love and patience, um, you know, to, to, to deal with um, the children this morning. Um, and um, for Treasure Box as well, um, thank you for what a big blessing they are to our community, Lord. Um, and so we lift them up to you as well. Um, and just so thankful, Lord. Um, and uh, lastly, we just want to pray for PSM, uh, who will be giving the message this morning. We want to thank you in advance for the word that you have spoken uh, to him. And we just pray for just greater anointing for him this morning, Lord, as he delivers your word um, that, that uh, we're ready to receive, Lord. We just uh, want to say yes to you this morning. Um, and so we pray that the truth uh, will just be will be clear, and will be convicting in our hearts, Lord. That will that will um, you know lead us to to a change in behavior, Father, Lord. Um, and so we thank you this morning, Lord. Um, thank you for for um, for this community. Thank you that we can come and worship you freely, Lord, um, in this place. Um, and it's not something that we take for granted, but it is a big blessing, Lord. Um, and so all this um, we pray. Uh, we just want to say we love you, Lord. Um, all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Welcome to service. 
Should we stand? And just say hello to the people around us. Blessed Sunday. Okay, should we recite the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Um, we are also going to recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, indeed, it's such a privilege to come and worship you today, Lord. We just ask for your presence to fill not just the space, but our hearts, Lord. For the kingdom, the power, and the glories are truly yours. Father, we just want to give you all honor and all praise, Lord. And we pray that you delight in our praises this morning.
can see the love in your eyes laying yourself down raising up the broken to Thank you for your amazing grace, Lord, that you set your treasures in broken vessels like us. How awesome is your grace and your mercy, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for being in our midst, Lord. And we just dedicate the rest of the service to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Um, can we just give one more round of applause to God? Give Him thanks for this time of worship. And give Him thanks because He's truly good to us. So welcome everybody to SP. Good morning. Um, okay, yeah. So for those of you who are new or maybe for those of you who haven't really been uh, plugged in to various ministries or to House Church, I'll encourage you to scan the QR code. Um, because House Church is very, very much a part of our DNA here in SP. So if you're not plugged into that, I suggest that you uh, scan that and get plugged in. And also, if you'd like to serve in any of the ministries as well, uh, you can scan that QR code and find out a little bit more. Um, and for all the newcomers here today, 
we would like to welcome you after service uh, for lunch if you don't have any other plans. Uh, could I ask Tim and Ealing to stand up? Uh, so Tim and Ealing from Siglap House Church <laughs> will be hosting a newcomer's lunch this morning. So if you are new to SP, you'd like to find out more, you'd like to get connected, please look for them after service at the welcome table outside. And so this morning, without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, P. Sam to come up because I think he has some special announcements for us today. P. Sam, please. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Good morning, everyone. So wonderful to see all of your lovely faces. Um, why don't you take a moment, if you haven't yet, and just say hello to the person on your left and right and uh, in front of you, behind you. Just welcome them this morning. All right. So for those of you who know, we are, we, we are wrapping up our Transform series. And we have had seven lessons over the span of 10 weeks. We had an incredible um, uh, Easter weekend and a, and a forgiveness weekend. And so you should have watched your last video last, uh, last week within your house churches. But as you know, for those of you following the book, you still have a full seven days of devotionals. And so your devotionals will continue to run through. Most of you, most of you, uh, I mean, so, some of you that may have started on Monday, you might be actually wrapping up. And so I've heard many wonderful things about our Transform series. Uh, I think it was deposited. Uh, it was God's idea. He planned it for our community. It really brought our house churches together and those that made the commitment and, uh, and, and signed the uh, commitment cards and, and came together and, and went out of their way and troubled themselves. I've been hearing so many incredible testimonies and blessings coming along. I've heard that many have been blessed by the sermons that have been aligned with the Transform series. I've heard many have been blessed by the videos, uh, the very practical teachings of Rick Warren. But one of the things that I heard the most, probably across the board, is that everyone was very, very encouraged by the daily devotionals. I don't know how many times I heard, oh, the message was good, the video was good. Oh, but man, the daily devotionals. It was so good just meeting with God and just committing and encountering him, committing to him and encountering him. And so I've even heard some people worried, like, what are we going to do after the Transform series? What are we going to do after the book is gone? And Pastor Sam, I'm a little concerned. I had this kind of this wave going, this consistency, and I was meeting with God regularly. And now that the book is over, I don't know if I have a reading plan or a Bible reading plan. And to be honest, I'm not very consistent with my, my devotionals. And so what we have prepared for you, actually our, our sister Allie uh, from a Hillcrest House Church, she's helped me to put together a devotional book. And so we, have a, we should have a picture of it of our Devo books. And so we've actually put together our own Solomon's Porch devotional books. And we have them out on the welcoming tables. And so over the next couple weeks, we're going to be sharing these with you guys. And this is a great way for you to continue on in your daily devotionals. And so we actually have uh, the very same setup. What did you hear from God? What did you think? What will you do? talk to God. And if you guys remember, I encourage you guys when you're writing and responding to the scriptures to actually write to the Lord, right? To say to the Lord and also respond as if the Lord is speaking to you. And so Ali has helped us. Can we give a, a round of applause for Ali? <laughs> and so these are monthly devotionals. They have a, a whole month's worth of daily devotionals and the verses that are in here are from the scriptures and they're tied to our redemption theme, the year of redemption. And so if you can, pick up one of these and what's ex what really gets me excited about this is that the whole church, if you're picking these up on a monthly basis, we're actually reading the same scriptures and downloading. And you can continue, if you already have a Devo plan, if you already have a reading plan, you can continue that on the side if your house church has something in addition to that as well. But I think this is going to be an incredible blessing. It's, uh, it's going to be, we're going to ask you to pay for it, to put some skin in it so you take ownership of it. And so it's going to be $3.50. And so 
Depending on where you are in your transform book and, and when you think you're going to finish that up, I encourage you to pick one up, uh, uh, get it for your house church, and uh, get together on the same page, and uh, continue on in meeting with the Lord on a day-to-day basis intimately in the scriptures. Amen? Amen. So really excited about that. Um, just, just a few comments on the Transform series as, as we are wrapping that up. Um, just really thankful for Rick Warren and his book. And, and I, I know he may have a different style and, 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 and culture and the way he says things and whatnot. Um, and, and I get that. You know, it's not, it's not for everybody. But I hope that everyone can appreciate the very practical and simple and biblical scriptures that he's reading from and that there shouldn't really be a barrier from receiving from someone who's reading the Bible and giving some practical principles. Um, some, of, some of my favorite things he said this past week, he's, he's really good with like these like snappy, cliche type sayings. And um, uh, even last week, I find myself really encouraged. I, I visited a, a house church yesterday. Um, just a couple reminders. You know, he says, check up from the neck up. Did you guys get that one? That one was so nice, right? Check up from the neck up, right? Make sure you're, 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 you're checking up on your thinking, on your thought life, right? He says, uh, get rid of your stinking thinking. Come on, how, how can you not like that, right? Get rid of your stinking thinking, right? Your, your, the negativity, the toxicity, tox, you know, the negative thoughts. Um, turn your work into worship. Turn your work into worship. Every job in God and for God. This was the last video, some of my favorite sayings. Um, you know, on the matter of, uh, of vocation, if you missed the sermon last Sunday, come on, guys, your pastor is very humble. I seldom ever say this, right? I, I, I don't self-promote, but, like, if you're really struggling with work and vocation and you've been having a hard time, I really encourage you to go back and listen to last Sunday's sermon. Um, I think, I think it, there's a lot of stuff there scripturally that, that God can speak to you in. Uh, uh, Rick reminds us that character, character, your character is more important than your career. That God cares more about your character than he does about your career. That your career that you're putting everything into is not going to make it to heaven with you. Your career doesn't go to heaven with you, right? Right? but your character does, who you are does, what you value, what you believe in, right? So character is more important than career. You're not taking your career to heaven with you. So just let that sit and ponder a little bit for all the things that we, you know, put our time and focus and energy in and for all the things we're willing to cut corners or to cut people for the sake of career. And God says and reminds us that your character is, God is far more concerned with your character and how you work and why you work uh, uh, than your career itself. And so I, th- I just thought these were some great reminders. Uh, check up from the neck up. Get rid of your stinking thinking. You know, I liked it a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, over the next few weeks, uh, in addition to that, uh, we're going to be having some testimonies. We have a couple testimonies today. We're going to have a couple c- testimonies next week, probably into the third week. We have a worship night coming up in uh, May. We always have a worship night a couple weeks right before we get into the retreat, and we just want to sync together and just you know call on the Holy Spirit and rely on the Holy Spirit. And so we realized that you know uh, uh, sitting in a in a position of leadership, I realized that I, I hear so many testimonies. And I'm the one going into board meetings and and leadership meetings and saying, have you heard this? Have you heard that? And I realized that not everyone in all corners of the church gets to hear those testimonies. And and sometimes you can feel like there's not much going on in the church or or is God God silent or absent? And that's absolutely not true. God is moving in the lives of individuals, transforming lives. People are encountering God Uh, uh, But depending on what pocket or circle, you may not get privy to that info. And so we just wanted to open up in response to all that God has been doing in our community, you know, moving and and just filling and depositing and transforming. And so over the next few weeks, uh, we're going to have some of those testimonies come up. If you have a testimony or house church leaders or someone, I want to encourage you to share that within your house churches this week. This week, we're going to dedicate post-transform over the last 10 weeks, including Easter, including the Forgiveness Weekend. 
This next week in your house churches, I want you to think and pray and ask the Lord, how has God moved in your life, however big or however small, that you would be bold and courageous to come into your house churches this week, ready to share with one another what God has done in your life. And so we just want to open that up and give you an opportunity to share your testimony within your house churches. And then a handful of you, as the Spirit prompts us and moves us, might be asked to come and share uh, within our community. Uh, We had a um, house church leaders meeting, actually one of the last uh, all-group house church leaders meetings. We now have zone pastors, and uh, really encouraged and really blessed by that. Pastor Matt has stepped up. Uh, Pastor Daniel has stepped up. We have 17 house churches. We've broken them up into three zones. And so now we have pastors that are intentional about going regularly and meeting in house churches, also meeting with house church leaders one-on-one. We're trying to provide more care, more support, more more encouragement. And in one of our last house church leaders meetings, um, we were all together, and we were meeting at uh, the Riviera, which is where uh, a couple of our church members live, and it's not too far from uh, the Grand Copthorn. Some of you guys remember where we used to meet. And uh, it's, a, it's a short walk from there. It's, it's, uh, uh, and so we had a leaders meeting there, and we were worshiping, and we were praising, and Holy Spirit was there, and we were ministering, and, and it, dawned, it dawned on a couple of our leaders. I won't, I won't say their names. Um, you know, in, in, in alignment with sort of our theme, the year of redemption, it, it, it was just, it was so incredible they realized that this is the actual physical space where the, uh, uh, the Zook, no, it's not a cafe, what, what is it? The Zook Club, where the Zook Club was, right? And so it was an incredible testimony of redemption. We were hearing stories of leaders who, when they were younger, illegally went to this club. <laughs> and who knows what they did, right? And some of our own leaders, all right, some of you guys are like, <laughs> no eye contact. I can't see you anyways because of the lights. Um, and, and, and just people sharing how 15 or 20 years ago, I was in this very space doing very other things. And now here I am, right, redemptive. Oh, now I can see you, beautiful. <laughs> Scary. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and, and now that we were there worshiping and praising and giving glory to God and just an incredible story of redemption. Amen? Guys, this is the year of redemption. Why we, we, we early on since last year, November, December, January, February, we're like, we're praying for salvation. We're praying for breakthrough. We had an Easter service where like 30, 40, 50 people raised their hand for the call for salvation and recommitments, right? People are encountering God. This is the year of redemption. And so we want to hear these testimonies of your lives and your struggles and the places where you were defeated and almost on the brink of giving up, but then you encountered God and Jesus came in and intervened and he filled your heart and he filled your life, right, with with purpose and with meaning and there was a restoration and healing and now redemption and now everything you do, you do for the glory of God. Everything you do, every, your image, your name, who cares about my image, my name? I want to glorify God with my name and my image, right? The very design for which we were made. The word testimony can mean a lot of things. You probably have used it in many places, in, in various places. Uh, in the dictionary, in the Cambridge uh, Dictionary, it says, spoken or written statement that something is true. It was actually a really complicated definition, and then I needed a dictionary to look up the dictionary meaning in the Oxford, but then right beside it, they were very nice. I felt like they had an explanation for people like me, and right there next to it, it said, a spoken or written statement that something is true. In the Oxford Dictionary, it says, any form of evidence or proof. Uh, Biblical definition of testimony. What does the Bible say about testimony? If I were to just simplify and just narrow it down, it's telling someone else about your relationship with God. It's simply telling someone else about something that God has done in your life. Anything that you talk about that points to Jesus or gives God the credit is a testimony. You testify about God's move in your life. You testify about how God has changed you. You testify about how how you've encountered his presence 
Why do we testify, right? So if you ask the question when and where and how and why, generally speaking, most of us are probably familiar in a court setting, you've seen movies or dramas, right? A, a court or legal setting when facts are needed, right? When disputes are had and, and things are murky and you're not sure who or what to believe, you have to be able to provide facts, right? When facts are needed, testimonies are asked of. And if you think about this, uh, we testify a lot all the time. I think, I think if, we don't, if, if, you're not, if you're not aware, we, you know, we testify, we tell things about, th you know, we, we say things that we value to people all the time. We say, like, have you seen this movie? Oh, trust me. It was so good. I woke up this morning to a 40, 45 plus message chat from one group. And the conversation was about, is In-N-Out better or is Shake Shack better? <laughs> from, my, from my best friends in California. And, um, and, and they're testifying. They're testifying. You know, if you first had it in the first time in New York, in, 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 in Washington Square or whatever, then for sure I would say Shake Shack is the best. But across the board, globally, no way. Doesn't, not even good. You know, In-N-Out is the best. And I have a bit of a confession. I'm from California, and I've always loved In-N-Out. But when Shake Shack first came out, I, I, I was in New York for maybe four weeks for a, a, a training intensive, and I ate Shake Shack six times. <laughs> That's how much I liked it, and I was raving to my friends in California. Um, but now I have come back to the light. <laughs> and in and out is by far, uh, I'll just stop right there. Okay, um, so we testify all the time. We say, trust me. Oh man, if you haven't, you gotta try it. And so we're, we're telling people all the time, whether it's, it's fashion, whether it's food, whether it's a movie. Scripturally, when I think about the word testimony, uh, there are so many places all throughout the scriptures, but a, a handful of places really stands out to me. And I wanna read for you from Luke chapter eight, verse 38. And the context of this is someone who was demonized. Someone who was so broken, shackled, literally chained. Someone who wished he could do something else. Someone who wished he could break out of his mindset, his, 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 his patterns, his, 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 his you know, uh, patterns of destruction, but literally had no power or no ability. I would imagine that for a time people tried to help him, especially those that were close to him, and those that loved him, but then there came a time where, where this person couldn't be helped, was hurting himself, and then was probably hurting people he loved. And so even eventually, the family gave up on them, on this person. And so it's the, it's the account of the demoniac, and he lived in the tombs, and he was shackled, and he was abandoned, and just given over to his own devices, mind, mental, physical, emotional, no amount of prayer, no amount of intervention, no people, just, they just gave up. And even, even family, I guess, I, I can only imagine for someone that they loved had to consider this person as dead and gave them up and, and, and let them go. And Jesus comes on the scene and he comes over the horizon and there's this light and there's this power and this presence where no one, no matter how amount of power or authority or prayer, and Jesus comes on the scene and speaks life into this person and casts out the demons and the person is restored and, 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 and sound of mind and sound of heart and, and given a second chance at life. And then this is the context. The man, verse 38, whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Go home to your families and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. For those of you who've done GIC. Basically, he was dead to himself, dead to everyone. And now, because of Jesus, he's alive. He's alive. And all he wants to do is to follow Jesus and to be with him, right? When you got saved, all you wanted was more of Jesus, 
right? You tasted of the goodness. You tasted of the mercy. You tasted of the forgiveness. You got this new life. All you wanted was to be in his presence, to be in his word, to be in a house of worship. And that's all this man wanted. You know, as far as he's concerned, he had nothing left. I mean, no one gave him a second, third, or fourth chance. And, and he was good, ready, listen, he was ready to devote every fabric of his life, every moment of his life from that point forward to the Lord Jesus. I mean, I can only imagine what type of disciple this man would have been. And Jesus asks him, and you have to understand Many people come to Jesus. Many people encounter him. And he doesn't, he doesn't say this to, 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 to all contexts in every situation, but for this particular man who was so ready to get on the boat and come with him, and Jesus says, no. Right? And, and, and I can only imagine the, the, the gaze and the locking in in Jesus' heart. It's like, I know you love me, and I know you would make an incredible disciple, but I need you to go back to your family and tell them how much God has done in your life. And when I think about it, if I'm honest with myself, I think of the two options that that's actually the harder one. To say that I'm going to forget and leave everything behind, and that I'm going to start new and fresh and do whatever you say, right? For some of us, if we're very honest, that's much easier. I mean, giving up things and sacrificing your life and your time and your finances, all yeah, that's hard. We're not saying that's not hard, but... But between doing really hard things and letting go and starting new versus going back to relationships and people of brokenness and hurt and God saying, take this newfound relationship you have with me and go back to those that you have hurt, those that have hurt you, and bring the gospel to that place because it's so desperately needed and you need that same healing. I think... It is, in fact, the harder of the two. To follow Jesus in the very broken and difficult context of your life versus to follow Jesus, you know, from June 9th to 12th at, at the retreat when we're all there, you know, or, or in house church on Fridays or, or Wednesdays or wherever that might be, or on a Sunday when we're of right, you know, heart, mind, you know, sober mind, and the temptations are not there. Reconciling broken relationships Versus starting over, I think many of us would prefer to start over. And here Jesus says, no, I know you love me, and I know you would do everything to follow me. And I want you to take that same commitment and that same passion, the very heart where it came from that you said you would follow me and do anything for me, that same heart, I want, to I want you to take it back to your family. Go back to your community and tell them how much the Lord has had mercy on you. And what does this guy do? Of the two, I, 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 can, I can assure you he would prefer to follow Jesus, but what does he do? He obeys. He simply obeys. I'm sure his heart was here, not there. Right? But the Lord said, go there. And he simply submitted and he obeyed. He did perhaps what he didn't want to do, but he did it because he wanted to obey and please the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you this morning. What have been some things that maybe God has asked you to do that maybe the emotions or the feeling or the conviction not necessarily there, right? Or it's hard or it's difficult. It certainly is troublesome. It certainly is not something natural. But you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, either this week or last week or last month or the months before, God has given you a word and he's challenged you and how quick we are to say, was that really you, God? Right? And how quick we are to commit to two or three other things because we don't want to commit to this one thing. You guys do that? I do that. Right? God, you want me to do this? Well, I can't do that, but I'll do these three, four other things. Right? And as if like God's going to, oh, wow, that's a, you're, you have an amazing idea. <laughs> right? um, and then we wonder sometimes why we don't hear from God. Right? It's an honest question. We wonder sometimes why God hasn't spoken to us in the last six months. I feel, Pastor Sam, I'm doing my devotionals. I'm, I'm serving faithfully. I'm, I'm, as far as I know, I'm not sinning anywhere. And, and I just feel so distant from God. I feel like there's some blockage or, you know, could it be, could it be that the last thing God asked you to do, you haven't followed through on? 
And so why would God give you the next assignment when you haven't even followed through on the last assignment he gave you? Right? So, so that might be for someone here. Right? So you want to kind of turn over some rocks and check and do some spiritual inventory. He simply obeyed. He did what he didn't want to do simply because the Lord meant everything to him. And then he went back and he gave testimony and he testified, right, uh, uh, to the very people who gave up on him, to the very people that abandoned him. He had to go back to his family, to his parents, to his friends, you know, to the community, to the kids who don't even know him, right, who called him the boogeyman. Oh, there's a boogeyman, the story of the guy that lives in the tombs. Don't ever go there. And then the boogeyman shows up, right, and, and he has to share with people how much and so, and so people would encounter him. And that's, that's what he did. He testified. What, what was he testifying? He was testifying not about himself, not about his worth or, or, or what he did that was so great. He was simply testifying that Jesus had come into his life. He was pointing people through his life story. He was pointing people to Jesus, that God is real, that, the, that his power is real, that his love is real, that second chances are real. And he was testifying and pointing and talking about Jesus, and so people would come to encounter him. Uh, a second place in scriptures that comes to mind, again, you know, of many places, uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 14. And um, a little bit of a different context, uh, there were 10 uh, uh, lepers, and uh, they had this disease, and so they were ostracized uh, from the community. Um, they couldn't be a part of their family as well, uh, uh, they had to be separated. You know, someone who got leper, uh, uh, leprosy uh, disease was, was considered as dead. Um, you might say a final farewell, and then you would never see them again. Completely on the outskirts, never able to come back into community. If they were, they would be severely punished. And so these lepers are crying out, 10 of them, and Jesus tells them in faith to go to the priests and show yourself. And, and there's several accounts of this, and a couple other various places as well. And what, what fascinates me, what really is interesting and fascinates me about this particular verse, he says in verse 14, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. And one of the things that really is interesting to me about this is that these, these men had a lot of faith. Right? Jesus didn't heal them and then go show yourself to the priest. In this particular case, he's talking to 10 people who are diseased, go to the priest and show yourself. And what, what is fascinating to me is that all 10 of them had faith to go to the priest even though they were still diseased. And the scripture says, as they went, as they were going, they were cleansed, they were healed. And one of them saw as he was going, right, in faith. The ten of them went. But one of them saw that he was completely healed. And then he came back and praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And, and just a couple things stand out to me here in these verses. There's a lot of faith going on here, right? There's ten people with a lot of faith going on here. There's a lot of healing going on here. There's, there's a lot of movement going on here. God is showing up. God is... But there's not a lot of gratitude. There's a lot of faith. There's a lot of healing. There's a lot of move. But there's very little gratitude. There's very few people coming. In fact, only one to Jesus to say thank you. I imagine that they're all very grateful in their hearts. I don't think there's any question about that. I, I imagine they had people they had to meet that were very important. But what this tells me was that as grateful as they are and were for what Jesus had done in their lives, they were too busy to come back and give thanks to Jesus. That's, that's what that tells me. No, no question about whether they're grateful or not. They certainly are. And no, no question about the encounter and the faith and God showing up. But one went out of his way and troubled himself and put everything on pause because Jesus comes first and came and gave a public declaration. I'm sure people there were around him. 
And the one who came back, the whole significance of the Samaritan, is this is the irreligious one. This is the one who knows, who didn't grow up in the church, who didn't grow up being taught, and yet he was the most thankful. <laughs> and he came. Um, lots of faith, lots of faith. But too busy, too busy. Um, let the Holy Spirit speak to you this morning. What in our life, what in our lives is so busy that we don't have time to give thanks to Jesus or to testify? What in life is so consuming that when you have an encounter with God that you don't have time to process it or to even write it down or to even tell someone else about it who might in fact be struggling with the exact same thing that you might be struggling with, right? And you're taking a step of faith and sharing how God has healed you and giving praise to God might encourage and bless someone else. This guy is coming back and giving thanks for vision, something that everyone already has. Lord, thank you that I can see, that I can see you, right? And then some of us stand here, yeah, yeah that's, you're right. It is a blessing that we can see you, Jesus. What an incredible blessing that you're moving in my life. Lord, I don't thank you enough. Um, I, I, I had this thought about heaven and rewards. We don't, I don't think we talk too much about it. Um, but I would joke. I would jokingly say things like, you know, I would go to people's homes and they're amazing and, man, how hard you must have worked. And, and I genuinely appreciate it, and it's beautiful. I appreciate art, decor, and all that, and I've, and I've been to many of your homes. Very beautiful. And, I, and then I jokingly say on the side, hey, this is awesome, but when we get to heaven, you can hang out at my place, <laughs> right? I'll hold a barbecue, right? I'll be the host, and I can't wait. And, and it's partially joking, uh, you know, talking about heavenly reward, and, and I, I don't want to get into all the details now. If you want, I can teach on it another time. Um, but there's a lot of debate about you know, uh, uh, many rooms in my father's house. There's different interpretations of, the, of that. I, I don't think square footage is going to mean what you think it means in heaven in the way gold does here on earth. So if gold and, and precious gems and rarities that are very expensive are things we walk in in heaven, walk on in heaven, meaning it has no value, Right, you don't even think about it. You don't, when's the last time you walked on the street? You're like, whoa, this is an amazing street. You might have complained about a street, but you don't, you don't necessarily appreciate a street if it's done really well. I, I don't think there's, there's going to be space or square footage comparisons in heaven. This is what I do think, um, and I probably got to come up with some better verses to qualify it. But, but all I know is like, when someone really prophetic or when someone was with quite a bit of anointing comes, I, I've noticed this over, over my 20 years in ministry, People flock. People want to, like when RT was here, it was amazing. I, I loved it. it and, and we brought him here so that he could bless you. It was amazing to see how many people just wanted to, even if they didn't talk to him, just wanted to sit next to him. You know, when we went out for meals together, proximity or who would come and, and, and whatnot, guest lists. It was just amazing. When, when P. Sam Song comes and he preaches, and, you know, people want to be around him, near him, get that anointing, get that prayer. And so, so I realized, it, it just kind of reminded me of the verses where Jesus was holding banquets and tables and, and there were people that wanted to sit next to the guest of honor and people that thought they could but were moved to the side because they didn't have the relationship they thought they had with Jesus or, or you know, if you want to make those parallels. And so I think in, in, in heaven, the reward is going to be everything to do with relationship and proximity. It's going to have everything to do with how close you are and how intimate and personal in relationship you are here on earth, that that's going to pay out in some way and some reward in heaven. It's not going to be about square footage. It's not going to be about material or comfort. It's going to be everything to do with your relationship with the Lord. And, um, you know, I was reminded at a, at, a, at a banquet, you know, Awakened Generation, some of you guys were there, um, the greatest inheritance, I was reminded by the speaker, the greatest inheritance the greatest inheritance, just say inheritance in your mind, in your heart, you know, whatever you think that means. The greatest inheritance is personal intimacy with Jesus. Amen? That intimacy we had with Jesus in the garden, you know, without any division, without any wall, and then broken because of sin. Jesus paid the full price on the cross so that we would come back into that relationship. So I think the reward has everything to do with intimacy and relationship with the Lord. 
here and now and forevermore. And so this guy came back to testify, to testify, to give testimony, and to give thanks to Jesus. Testimony is simply telling someone how thankful you are for Jesus in your life. And he actually comes back to testify to Jesus, right? You know, there's verses where, you know, minister, give praise. Uh, 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 The angels came and ministered and tended to the needs of Jesus. And so this guy comes back and gives glory and praise for what he did in his life back to Jesus. So you can testify to others. You can give praise to God. Uh, The third and last one, um, John chapter 4, verse 39 uh, it's, it's the woman at the well, and she's, she's living in sin, and she has multiple partners, and she comes out to draw water in, in, in midday, which is not the custom. It's not what you do. It's hot. Uh, uh, you need water in the early part of the day to start off the day. So every household knows, you know, that's organized. You come in the morning, and, and community, and, and there's people there, and friends, hey, good morning, how was your week? You come together. And, but this person came isolated by herself, alone, and somehow, and, and Jesus actually refers to this, uh, we have to go through this area. And, and the disciples are like, but like, this is the faster route. No, but God, God has something. And then, and then he hasn't eaten, they haven't eaten, everyone's hungry. They come back and, and, and want to tend to Jesus' needs and, and, and give him sustenance. And, Je- and, 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 and Jesus says, I have food to eat that you do not even know of, which is to do the Father's will. And so a lot of times we apply, I'm too tired to do things for kingdom or God or commitments or service because I'm physically tired. But then we've totally negated and forgot that that's not by the power by which we do these things anyways. Right? And so are we actually serving God by our own power? Right? And then if we don't have that energy or, or, or ability, then we don't serve God. But biblically, that's not accurate. Biblically, it's, there's power that we have access to that's beyond our physical, emotional, mental capacities. Jesus gives us the strength through the Spirit. And for Jesus, it was doing the will of the Father. It was seeing people encountering God. Seeing people experience the Father and having breakthrough was like sustenance, right? And I think we would all agree. We can do worship. We can do teaching. But if people aren't encountering God, people aren't experiencing, right? That's, that's what we want Like that when this Holy Spirit is moving there's such energy, there's such life. And so Jesus comes and uh, uh, um, speaks to this woman in such a way, in such a way that she doesn't feel like she has to hide more. She feels like she has to reveal more. Wow. Jesus shows up, and instead of feeling like you have to hide all your shame, He says it in such a way that she wants to reveal everything. And and this is what she says in verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. And listen to what she says. She says, he told me everything I ever did. How terrified would you and I be if someone walked up to you and told you everything that you ever did? How, How fearful and how shameful, and how hidden you would want to be the next time you showed up, if even you thought it would become public. But here this woman, Jesus, had such a way of saying that sin, it's wrong, it's destructive. I made you, I know you, and if you continue in this route, it will destroy you. Don't do that anymore. And, and, and to be able to say that in a way, in a tone, in, in a gaze where the woman, in the spirit, power of the spirit, where the woman knows she's not being condemned. She's actually being loved. Jesus is calling her out on everything. She's not being condemned. She feels loved. And then she has the boldness to go out and say, guys, all this stuff, he said, Verse 40, so when the Samaritan came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the women, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. 
And that is the hope of the testimony that we give. I think when we testify and give testimony, I think it serves notice on several layers or realms or whatever you want to call them. I think it serves notice to the enemy, right? That this is true, that you proclaim proclamation, right? When you get baptized, you serve notice to the enemy that you're no longer on the market for the world. You no longer have one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom, right? I, I've renounced, I've rejected the ways and the patterns and the things of the world. I fully give my life to the Lord Jesus and I make a public declaration. Yeah, I'm in love secretly, but now I want everyone to know that I'm in love publicly, right? That, that's, that's what weddings are, right? Same thing with baptism. You're not ashamed. You're not afraid. So it serves notice publicly to those around you. It serves notice to the enemy that you're off the market. And, 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 but honestly, I think this is a part that many may neglect. It, it also blesses us. When we testify and we're worried or afraid, when we testify and we see how God uses that, it also encourages and blesses us. Sometimes we think God did something and you're certain of it, and then a few weeks go by, and then you rationalize it. Oh, maybe it was just coincidence. Not so when you proclaim it and name it in the name of Jesus. Not so when you declare it. You know, and others have heard it, and others can confirm and testify. And so it's also good for us. It's pleasing to the Lord. It benefits others. But it's also good for us to acknowledge and to you know, proclaim the good works, the, the moves of God, the, the, of, of spirit in our life. Um, and this is what she does. And then eventually it leads to others coming and encountering. So we, church, we got to go out. We got to testify. Right? This year is a year of redemption. I've, I've, got, I've got a few downloads already for a 2025 theme. I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know. I got to wait on it. Right? But I think it's going to have something to do with we got to get out there. We got to get out there and start proclaiming and inviting and, and, and testifying and and. and, and you know, filling our house churches with non-believers and, 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 and just reaching out and just seeing transformation. Um, so just a couple thoughts before we wrap up this morning. Um, woman at the well was living in the shadows. Jesus exposes her sin while at the same time revealing his love. I think the church needs to really work on this, including myself, right? All of us as leaders, right? Exposing sins but loving people how is it that Jesus can expose, but at the same time, this person wants more of Jesus, not less of Jesus? You know, what, what, what did he say? How did he say it? What was the heart? What was the spirit? What was the power? What was the prayer? Divine appointment, right? Loving people in their weaknesses and sins to come to the Lord. Right? Is that a good way to say it? Loving people, conveying in such a way that it makes them want to draw near to the Lord, not further. When people are exposed, they, they generally want to run away. They feel rejection. And, and, and for this person, somehow Jesus says, you don't have to. And, and I shared this last week, All right? This should be the sentiment when correction, when, when correcting someone, this, this should be the heart. You are fully known and you are fully loved. That's basically what Jesus said to this woman. Right? Look at this man who knows, who told me everything I ever did. And then she gives her life in devotion to him. You are fully known and you are fully loved. And so then she goes and tells everyone, and many, many in that community come to faith. Redemption. Redemption. God used what the enemy meant for harm, this broken person, and then used that story and redeemed it and brought new life and used it to bring many to him. Um, if I could invite the worship team, oh, not the worship team, sorry, just the piano this morning. And um, some of you guys know my testimony. I, I won't go into all the details, but at the age of 20, I completely left the church, right? I, 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 I left my faith. I got saved. I mean, my parents took me to church ever since I was born. We, we, we had moved to Los Angeles, and they had no insurance. They had no money. And so they were so terrified that I might get sick, and so they went to church every Sunday. Jesus was our family's insurance, right? And so I was dedicated as a baby, you know, confirmed as a, as a youth. And uh, I gave my life to the Lord when I was 12 at a youth camp, at a youth retreat. The youth pastor made an invitation, and I said yes. I, did, I don't know that I fully understand it, but I looked up at the heavens and the stars, and I, and I just knew. I knew 
there was something more. And I said, God, I want to follow you all the days of my life. And that was real. And I meant it. And, and I had teachers and leaders and pastors, people that I liked that I submitted to, people that I didn't like that I submitted to also. They didn't have perfect theology. They weren't the best leaders. But I trusted that God had aligned them for a reason, for a season. I, I could trust God in that. Absolutely trust God in that. I had no question about that. And so I was able to submit no matter the context. And then, and then, I, and then I go to college and I, and I fall away. And I, and I, and I live in sin. I, I do everything imaginable. Um, you know, debauchery, sin, lust, um, you know, all aspects. And, um, and I fell away from the Lord and my heart was hardened. And the Lord came and gave me a second chance. I remember praying in my apartment and the Lord called me and he gave me a second chance. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, there are people in this world who don't even get a first chance. Why would you give me a second chance? If I understand the scriptures correctly, there are people that go to hell because they never hear the gospel. And why would you give me a second chance knowing, no, I knowingly, and I knowingly knew you and I lived and I went after sin and I lived in all these things. Why would you call me back? And, and I made a commitment. I said, from this day forward, I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care what you ask me. I don't care what it costs. I will follow you. And I remember this is the part I want to get to and I don't know that I, you know, and I just remember I knew God had done something in me. I knew it was profound. And I'm honest to goodness, I, I was afraid that something might snatch it away. I mean, have you guys had revival encounters? And then has it gone away? Yeah? Yeah, so have I. I've been in the church long enough to know that I can have an encounter, and then six months later it can go away. And I was so afraid. I was so afraid that this might be another one of those encounters that as powerful as it was, and a second chance in my mind, come on, dude, how can you flail away a second opportunity? Like, I didn't have faith in myself that I would actually not mess up again. And I was terrified that six months from now, I'd be in this same place. I genuinely was terrified that this incredible move of God, six months from now, might be in the rearview mirror and I might not even think about it. You know what I did? Do you know what I did? I picked up the phone and I called my pastor. This is a new, he wasn't even my pastor, he was a new pastor. And I said, hey, Pastor Ron, PR, if you want to know where we get PSK, PMK, PDJ, <laughs> it's, it's from here because we call him a PR, right? And I said, I don't know what happened, but something significant happened in my life. I think God just did something, I don't know, but can you pray for me? And this is what I said. I said, can you keep me accountable? And I have no doubt that I'm able to walk in God's presence and anointing even through the many mistakes that I have made because I testified, I told someone about it, and I asked him to keep me accountable. And all throughout my life, I've been testifying and asking people to keep me accountable, pointing to Jesus. Um, just a couple verses. Well, I'll, I'll pause on that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get to this next week. Um, I do want to say this. In your house churches this week, I encourage you to come together and just testify. Even if you think it's not much, share with your house church how it is you think that God may have spoken to you specifically through the Transform series. Right? Pastor Sam, I didn't, I didn't go to many of them. I'm sorry, you know. I went to one or two. I did one deep... Fine, focus on those one or two that you went to. Focus on the one Devo that you did that week. Ask the Lord. If, you have, if there's a testimony, if God has encouraged you or ministered to you in any way through the Transform series over the past 10 weeks, we want to open up house churches this whole week primarily to share about that and for you guys to encourage one another. Um, if you just joined the house church or for whatever reason you weren't able to participate, 
listen, just listen for how others God has moved in through this series. Okay, uh, with that, we have a time of testimony. And so uh, I've asked two sisters to prepare and share and testify. And what they're doing is they're coming up and they're sharing about their life and they're saying how God has given them a second chance. And what they're sharing, when you boil it down, is simply this, that you would be encouraged. They're putting themselves out, right, in fear, but perfect love casts out fear so that you would be encouraged that if you are struggling with any of these things or if you've been struggling in your home or in your faith. And so uh, with that, I'm going to have our sister Amanda.
rise? And uh, I might ask uh, Amanda and Cindy, I might ask you guys just to say a prayer for everyone in a bit. Um, but let's, let's close our eyes to spend a few moments before the Lord. And I just want you to know as your pastor that you are in a safe place, that you can come before the Lord openly and honestly, that as your pastor and as your leaders, we want to do it the way Jesus did it, and we're still learning and growing. And, and if you struggle with anything or hardship, you're having a hard time in your family, and, and we might not have answers, but we, we, would, we, we would love to come alongside and pray for you. If you're struggling with, with uh, sexual temptation or, or money, or, or rela- we'll come alongside and we'll pray for you, we'll love on you. And uh, we, just, we just want you to know that this is a place where we want to do what Jesus did. We want people to come and be open and honest and at the same time can receive his love and his presence and to be made whole again, right? I think that's the incredible encounters of God. That's the type of encounters, transformation that we want. And so just take a few moments, just come before the Lord. And uh, I want to invite you, this is your own personal, individual time, just go before the Lord. Just confess anything you need to or want to before the Lord and just ask him for help. Just ask him for more of, your, more of his presence. There's a scripture verse that says, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Jesus is perfect love. Invite him. Lord Jesus, more of you. More of you. I need you in my family. I need you in my dating. I need you in my workplace. I need you in my home. Some of you guys have really broken Uh, uh, past families and you don't know what to do with it. You don't even know how to go back. Just invite the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, would you come? Some of you, the Lord has asked you to do something and it's been some time. Can I just invite you and encourage you to submit and obey? Lord, I submit and I obey to you. I follow you. Um, Can I ask Amanda and Cindy, can you guys just say a prayer? Amanda, if you could pray for families in our church, just that the Spirit of God would come and where, where people have maybe felt defeated and forgotten that God would come. And then I'll ask Cindy to pray. So guys, just close your eyes. Just receive from Amanda this anointing, this blessing on her that would be permeated to our church community. just thank you for your word this morning Um, and I just want to lift up all the families um, uh, up to you right now Father Um, you know um, all of our struggles um, and nothing is hidden from you Lord and we just want to yeah just just feel prompted Father Lord to just come um, just in repentance uh, and just say sorry Father Lord for the times that we've not put you first um, in our families times that we have relied on our own strength uh, to make things work rather than rely on you and we just want to say sorry lord um and father i just pray um that we just open up you know all of our hearts um as as parents um and just bring our families before you lord um daily father because we need you um every day And so I just pray for all the families in our midst. Uh, I just pray for the relationship between, um, you know, father and children, between mother um, and children. Father, Lord, I just pray that you will use these relationships um, to to bring you so much glory, Lord. I just pray that you will continue to give us the wisdom and discernment and the love 
and the compassion, Father Lord, to surrender our families to you, Lord. Um, and I just want to pray especially just for healing, uh, for relationships in the family, uh, for hurts um, that have happened in the past, Lord. Um, pray that we will not hide it away from you, but we will um, expose it before you, Lord, because your light, um, your light brings healing, Lord. Um, and that there's never any condemnation in you. Um, and so you always provide that safe space where we can bring our troubles before you. Um, and when we take that step of obedience um, uh, with your strength, Father Lord, uh, your grace and your love will just rush in. Um, and so I just pray for healing, Father Lord, for relationships. I pray that you will help us to step forward in faith, uh, to want to mend uh, these broken relationships that we may have um, in our families, Father Lord, and to just bring them before you to be able to forgive one another um, and and um, that, uh, that we can do so with your strength because we are forgiven by you, Lord. Um, so thank you, Father, that, um, that we have you to rely on and we want to acknowledge that you are the head uh, of each and every one of our families, Lord. Um, and so we just uh, lift this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, and so Cindy's going to uh, just pray for any of you who might be struggling uh, sexually, purity, lust, any of those things, pornography. And uh, she's just going to pray God's blessing, protection, and healing over you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, Father. I'm reminded, Lord Father, of your perfect love. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that in your perfect love, there is no need to hide. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing in all areas of our life. Beyond this temptation that, you know, sometimes we might um, have. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, that it is your continuous pursuit of love, your sprinkling of your blood, you dying of the cross, that continue to pursue and continue to win us over, Father. So Lord, right now, I declare that, you know, we will stand in between the gap. We will break this generation curse. We will stand between the gap so that our next generation will not experience the same thing. And we can cover them in the blood of Christ. We thank you, Lord Father, that you are endlessly pursuing us. We thank you, Lord Father, for instant recovery, healing. We thank you, Lord Father, for your, your, this, um, yeah, your this, you know, wonderful love that you know, not, no one can ever satisfy, Father. So we ask, Lord Father, that you cleanse us, we put on your righteousness, the, best, the breastplate, and we denounce any of the lies of the enemies that we have you know, choose to believe in the past. We thank you, Lord Father, all this would have to go in the mighty name of Christ. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that now we declare that we are in a right relationship with you, and that, Lord, we will delight in what you love. We will hate what you hate. And we thank you, Lord Father, for bringing healing into our lives, into our marriage, into our physical body. And that, you know, our, from then on, we will honour our body for you and for the Holy Spirit to live in us, Father. We thank you for the newfound perspective. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me, uh, let me close with a benediction. Uh, after service, if I could ask... Uh, um, Cindy's house church and Amanda's house church. Can you guys come around your house church leaders and just pray for them and just bless them and encourage them? Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we just come before you. We dedicate and commit this whole service, our church, and ourselves to you. Lord, we pray that you would come and begin to break the chains. In the name of Jesus, that you will break the chains of bondage brokenness and hurt in homes and marriages and families. Lord Jesus, begin to break those chains. There is, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. We speak life into our church, into our marriages. We speak life into our singles, into the dating community. Lord, we speak life into our youth, into our children, that the, the seeds of truth and life and love would be planted. Lord, we pray uh, against and we pray for breakthrough in pornography and sexual bondage and sin and, and, and sex outside of marriage. 
We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and bring freedom and bring life. Jesus, come. Lord, where you are, there is, there is perfect love. And I pray in every heart, in every mind, in every person that they would know that they are not alone. They, they, they may feel like they've been battling this, this struggle in, their, you know, in, in, in any capacity, their home, finances, marriage, loss, whatever it may be. They may feel like they've been battling it alone, but God, they are not alone. They are part of a church where many struggle. God, where many have been healed and they can be healed and we can be healed. We thank you, Lord. Would your Holy Spirit continue to move in us and with us, even as we close this service, even as we depart? God, would you bless them? Would you fill them with your love? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace, shalom, this day forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Let's give praise to Jesus. Let's give him all the glory, amen. Uh, please pick up a devotional book on your way out. You can scan to pay for 350. Uh, if I could have the board come to the front, we're going to pray.
Thank you.